only Anthony Joshua against Eric Molina. But of course, yesterday we saw the fun and games between Derek Chisora and Dillian White, an official eliminator for the WBC Heavyweight World Championship, Cal Yafai, bidding to become the first man from Birmingham to win a world championship against two-weight world champion Luis Concepcion, the return of Scott Quigg at 126 pounds at the featherweight limit, and a whole host of action, Katie Taylor making her second appearance. Um, Luis Ortiz, the heavyweight as well, and a fantastic British light heavyweight championship fight between Frank Bruglioni and champion Jose Byrne. We're gonna talk more on the fight shortly and hear from all the members across the table, but for right now, we're gonna go from Andy Byrne, Sky Sports News, for some live questions. Hey, gentlemen, we are live on Sky Sports News HQ today, so just a reminder to keep the language in check, which I'm sure won't be a problem from both of you guys. Anthony, it's the first time that we've seen you in the ring, as, as Eddie just said, since that defence against Dominic Brazil. So you've had a good break. Relatively speaking, it's a long break for you in terms of inactivity. Do you come into this refreshed, or is there a danger that you're perhaps a little rusty? I won't say rusty. I'll definitely say... I'm not going to say camp is smooth, I've had the greatest camp ever, but it's always tough. It's always you know, exhausting on the body, but a break is needed, I live in the gym, that's what I've been doing since I was 18, and I haven't taken my foot off the, off the gas pedal. So I wouldn't say it's rusty because I've learned how to fight, I've developed that, that ring craft now. So it's just basically expressing that every time I go out and do a bright light. So what we do in the dark corners of the gym, kind of manage to gain experience time and time again, Monday to Friday, to just express what I do time and time again when I go out and do the bright light. So no problem having a break for me. I'm looking forward to getting back in the ring and then building towards 2017. In terms of schedule and the camp, I guess camp started before your opponent was confirmed. And obviously there was so much talk about Klitschko being a, a possible opponent for December 10th. Was it in any way unsettling that at the beginning of camp you didn't know what you were preparing for? Not necessarily. I started camp really knowing I was going to get into camp. So just so I don't get injured, I started preparing my body for what was to come. So that was the initial start of camp. And then I started training ahead of schedule, preparing. And I don't even really want to mention Klitschko too much at the minute, as that's not the relevant opponent. You know, where at Molina, you know, he's going to be across the room from me December 10th, who's a tough competitor. When I look at it, I think he was the toughest out of the few, so I thought that's a good challenge for myself. And that's the man I've got to focus on. So I always knew I'd have someone who's game. And right now we're competing for a championship belt. So I think everyone's going to up their levels by 50 to 60 percent. So the people I've seen and watched time and time again are the people I'm going to face. So I have to put Klitschko or David Price or whoever was in the pecking order aside and focus on what's in front of me. And obviously, what would have been the dangers had you not done that? Or well, focus on what's in front of me. Yeah. You know, we find out December the 10th. Um, Everyone's going to train and do us and, and try and reach their potential in training camp. But you already find out, you know, come fight night. But there's nowhere to hide on that night. So everything that you've been thinking and been preparing for will be revealed come fight night. So I could only tell you what effects I would have had on me after the fight. And it doesn't have any impact on your motivation for this fight, the fact that it's Eric rather than Klitschko? No way, no way. Because, you know, I'm not going to, let's say, for instance, Klitschko has a jab that stands a couple of inches away from his face and I'm gonna to wait to count the punch pitch but I'll be waiting all night for that. So I just train as if I'm gonna win. I train because I enjoy it and I train because it's what I do really. So um, if I was fighting pitch over Melina I have the same ambition and that's to win. What did you make of Eric's performance against Deontay Wilder? His 5-3 knockdown showed great heart courage and determination before ultimately losing. What did you take from watching that? That's why I think that's why he's here now really. Great fight, it takes massive courage to step into that ring. And I think that, you know, Deontay Wilder is supposed to be known as like a, a one punch knockout artist. And he stood up to a lot of his, a lot of his punches, so it shows that, you know, this man's here to try and push the champions to their limits and try and take what they've got off. What's in store for Eric in Manchester on December 10th? Um, potentially the usual, um, yeah, combinations and a good night of boxing. Eric, welcome to London, welcome to, to England. Big night on December 10th. Anthony's opponents usually come to these press conferences but also these fights with a dream. They end up on their back. Why will that not happen to you? Well, you know, first of all, I uh, want to thank everybody for coming out here. You know, I, it, me and my guys, we just settled in. And uh, I've been in these fights before, you know what I mean? And uh, I have no amateur experience, number one. 
and uh, I'm learning on the job. But one thing you could look at look at the job I've been doing, and it's been getting better every fight. Um, the Deontay Wilder fight, I fought five rounds. I don't know if Anthony, but Anthony knows I fought five rounds with a busted ankle. So everything you saw in that fight was done on one, one ankle. So you know that's the type of fight that I'm coming in to give this this young 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 man here. I'm gonna fight with everything that I got. If I'm hurt, if 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 I'm conscious, I'm coming to fight. Um, and I know that I could win the fight with one punch at any given moment. And uh, that's the heavyweight. That's the heavyweight game. That's why we're all here. That's why you guys are so excited about this young man. Because it's the heavyweight division, and anything could happen in any second. Anthony Joshua knocks people out. He hurts people. You're not taking a massive risk with your own personal safety, learning on the job against the guy with his punch power. That's part of the heavyweight game, you know. When you look up and down the lineup, you look up and down the IBF rankings, you know, I knew this fight was coming my way because I know nobody wants to fight this guy. Let's be real here. All you guys, you, you guys want to call Klitschko. You guys want to call these other guys. They don't want to fight him. They don't want to fight. They'd rather go fight other people. They'd rather go fight for the other belts than to go through this man right here. You're looking at somebody that's sitting here that has been in these fights. I've been in with Wilder. Nobody wants to get in with Wilder. Nobody wants to get in with him. I'm here with him. Because he's, th he's got something that I want, and I, I don't have the option to go in any, any other direction. I gotta go through men like him, and that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to give everything that I got to take that belt. So what's he got in store, December 10th? He's gonna have the toughest fight of his career. That's, that's, that's a guarantee. Thank you. Eddie, one last question for you just while we're live, please. Can, can you confirm, is it right that Klitschko is, is planning or possibly going to come to Manchester on December 10th. Is he going to be there? Yeah, he'll be ringside. I mean, uh, you know, away from the focus of these guys, I think it's disrespectful to talk about Klitschko when anti has got to come for Eric Molina. And it's it's wrong to talk about Klitschko when anti joshua has got, I believe, the toughest fight of his career to date on December 10th. Klitschko will be there. We'll work behind the scenes. And of course, we've got a plan for anti joshuas future beyond Eric Molina. But he's got the toughest job to do, which is to be triumphant on December 10th. Gentlemen, thank you.